Alright, let's get let's give Doug a call. Let's call my man Douglas Zeef. Hi Doug. Uh, how's it going? I'm good, I'm good. How are you, my dude? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I'm a little worried about these questions if you're bringing <laughs> cards in that I've never played with before, but I'll do my best. Yo, we have the Chad! Doug <clears throat> Zeef himself. Okay, let's Yeah, this. the um, Chad. There he is! It's Doug! I'm looking okay. down at you. Dude, it's because I got my Altergeist cards here so I can read them. <laughs> he pulls them out. I gotta make sure. I gotta make sure. Go. Uh, as usual, as I've done with other content creators, what we're going to be doing is recording eight ruling questions. I'm going to ask you eight questions that all have to do with Altergeist rulings, which is the deck that you are most known for, considering the fact that you have posted at least 17,000 Altergeist deck profiles, one being literally this week. Uh, I had to make fun of you for that one because I don't know I don't know where you get this motivation to record 18,000 What do you mean? How many profiles? Unchained profiles have you posted? Two! I've posted two! <laughs> I don't know about that. So are you ready to get into the rulings? The chat is currently uh, gambling, and the gamble is, will Doug get five or more right or less than five correct? What? A lot of people seem to think I'm going to get more than five, saying. Well, I mean, you have been playing this deck for, like, since its release, right? Since the release of Faker, you've right. been on this. So, but you yeah. asked some hard questions. You asked some hard questions. I do, I do ask some pretty difficult questions. So let's get the show on the road with the very... First question. Player A activates the second effect of Altergeist Marionetter by targeting itself and a multi-faker that is in the graveyard. Uh, the opponent then chains there can be only one. How does this chain resolve? So Marionetter is using the effect to send the card that a target on the field to the graveyard to summon the one in the grave. Opponent chains Tikaboo as chain link 2. How does this chain resolve? So they're chaining it to the effect, right? Yeah, so Marionetter is chain link 1, Tikaboo is being flipped up as chain link 2. Run me through your thought process. I want to know how you how you dissect these rulings. How I dissect these rulings? I mean, I, it's a 50-50, right? So it can't be that hard. <laughs> um, it's, no, because it's like, uh, I mean, hmm. I can't say I've encountered this. Usually when the TK boo is flipped, I have multiple spellcasters. So this is kind of Ooh. a new situation for me. Interesting. Um, An interaction you've never seen before, even though you've been playing the deck since release. Very interesting. And even though that card has been flipped against me a lot, but it's usually <laughs> when I'm like in the middle of a combo, so I have like three cards. I feel like oh, it's being chained to it. Because if it was already on the field, I definitely would not be able to even like activate the Marionetter, because I it's kind of like the rivalry thing. That is so true. So I'm trying to already face up, being you wouldn't chained. be allowed to activate Marionetter. That's true. I feel like it because Marionetter Hmm. Mm. I feel like if it's being chained, it actually will send the Marionetter, and then it will see that I have no monsters on the field, and then it'll special the multi-faker. But like I said, like I really have not encountered this situation because flipping a TK boo and they only have one monster is like kind of cringe, bro. So I don't know <laughs> if people do that. But I'm gonna go with it tries to resolve, sends the Marionetter to the grave, specials the multi-faker, but that might be wrong. All right, so you are currently one for one. You are correct. The Altergeist Marionetter is sent to the graveyard because it's already been activated. So it'll attempt yeah. to resolve as much as possible. Because it's already activated, the Tiki Boo doesn't prevent it from sending itself. So after it sends itself, well, because you don't have any more spellcasters on your field, the summon of the uh, multi-faker is legal. So you can summon the multi-faker after that. Doug Zeef currently one for one. All right, ruling number two. We have player A declares a direct attack with Altergeist Melusik. How familiar are you with Melusik? Is it, is it the best card in the deck, in your opinion? It is. Yeah, it's the best card in the deck, yeah. <laughs> so player A controls a Melusik, and player B controls a Link Karibo, all right? And the player uh, who controls Melusik declares a direct attack with Altergeist Melusik, and player B uses the effect of Link Karibo to send a Link Karibo to the graveyard. In this case, if Melusik then conducts a direct attack afterwards as well, after damage calculation, will Melusik be able to use its effect to send the set card that player B has on their field to the graveyard? No. For what reason? I don't think zero is battle damage. Well, you'd be correct. Easy clap. That was one of the easier ones, dude. One of the easier oh, ones. Yeah. I'm giving you some free points, my guy. Free points. <laughs> All right. Moving on. And these uh, do get progressively more difficult, I'm letting you know right now. So you're, you're, you're okay. in the... Uh, you're in the easy zone right Soft now. Soft ball mode right now. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to uh, bring up another one that I feel is a pretty simple one. You've probably encountered this quite a few times before. Once again, we're going to be talking about Altergeist Melusik, but this time with an interaction with Altergeist Protocol. 
if uh, my opponent has skill drain up on they the field. They can't attack directly. <laughs> <laughs> when is this going to get hard, Cody? <laughs> Answering the question before I even ask it. Oh my god. So you would be correct. Under... Like, it sucks. like, I don't know why people play this card in this deck. It's so bad. <laughs> so, yes. So, to explain to those in the chat that do not know, uh, Altergeist Protocol prevents activated effects of Altergeist monsters from being negated because the effect of Melusik is a continuous effect under Skill Drain. It cannot attack directly. Doug is currently 3 and 0. Oh. And now we go into the more complicated stuff. So we're gonna we're gonna take a little bit of a you know blast from the past back to like 2018 or something like that, and we're going okay. to be considering a card by the name of Borolode Dragon. If player A attacks with Borolode Dragon into player B's Altergeist Multifaker, player A wants to use Borolode Dragon on their attack declaration. Player B wants to use Altergeist Kunkery. Which player is able to use their effect as chain link one here? Uh, the Borlode player can use his first. Okay, so your 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 answer is that Borlode uh, can use the effect, and then the Conquery will not be able to be used. Correct. Okay, so you are actually incorrect here, my friend, and the reason sure. why is specifically because the effect of Altergeist Conquery is a trigger effect, as opposed to the Borlode Dragon, which is a quick effect. So, as we know, um, the way chains are constructed, trigger effects always go on chain before quick effects can be used. So, if you compare something like Borlo Dragon and another monster that has a quick effect, you are allowed to use the Borlo Dragon as chain link one. Um, oh, however, sure. because yeah. because the Kunkuri is a trigger effect, it'll go on chain immediately when the attack is declared before the Borlo Dragon has the chance to activate its own effect. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. All right, so we are currently three for four for Mr. Doug Zeef, and we go on to our fifth ruling. Let's see. I told you we were getting progressively harder. We're halfway through, and uh, we've had our first miss of the video. So in this case, we are going to be using Altergeist Marionetter, and the opponent is going to control a sand. Yeah, Marionetter set strike? That was insane. Uh, Marionetter <laughs> didn't set strike. We're, we're cheating for the purposes of the video, okay? It's fine. It is what it is. <laughs> In this instance, uh, player mm -hmm. A enters the battle phase and declares an attack with their Altergeist Marionetter onto their opponent's set Sangan. After the Marionetter destroys the Sangan, the Sangan activates its effect to search, and then player A chains Solemn Strike to negate the search of Sangan. On resolution of this chain, can player A activate the effect of the Altergeist Multifaker in their hand? I believe so, yes. For what reason? Uh, just because it's a trigger effect. So... <laughs> So I'm going to uh, I'm going I'm going to be I'm going to tell you sadly unfortunately you what? are incorrect and the How? very simple reason is because Altergeist Multifaker has a line of text that says except during the damage step. Wait no no hold on. <laughs> no wait oh my gosh uh DC I don't, I don't but... think that's on my my card I don't yeah mine says it can work during the damage step I don't know uh, what uh... unfortunate dude <laughs> all right video's over see you guys later. <laughs> Yo, lost to reading, bro. Lost to reading. <laughs> oh my oh. god. Doug, you're gonna wanna come back oh, here, buddy. Gosh. We are not done. <laughs> what a disaster. <laughs> Dude, fuck you, man. <laughs> we are we are currently three for that five. One and count. and um yeah, so because uh multifaker Yeah, yeah, multi because it says it can't work specifically during that time. Yeah, we got it, Coder. What's the next <laughs> thing? <laughs> Yeah, moving on, moving on. Okay, now okay. I'm slowing down. Now I'm reading you... every fucking card. That <laughs> you are said. allowed you are allowed one more fuck up and the chat still gets their points. So if it makes you feel any better, you have not completely disappointed the chat just yet. Alright? This next question is using a card that you may or may not have played. This is one of those cards that is debated on whether or not is worth playing in Altergeist. And it's the one and only Altergeist Haunted oh Rock. I don't know gosh, how familiar no, you are with Haunted Rock. I've never Rock. played that fucking card. It sucks. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay. Player A activates their set Altergeist Haunted Rock and then chains the effect of their personal spoofing, shuffling away that Haunted Rock to add an Altergeist Multifaker. On resolution of this chain, are they going to be allowed to activate the Multifaker? And does Haunted Rock need to still send an Altergeist monster from the hand to the graveyard? And this is not during the damage step? It's well, not during the damage step. <laughs> I know it's not. Okay. I'm going to... So first off, the Faker definitely could activate. Um, as for okay. the Rock, which I've never played in my entire life because the card sucks. Although I understand <laughs> people picking up the deck and wanting to play Rock because it does like result in a pretty crazy turn one. 
so when this card is activated, send one alter gaze. So that's on resolution. Uh, uh, it shouldn't have you send because um, it's a continuous trap, and continuous trap seems to be face up to resolve. Plus, there's some like janky ruling with like if it's returned to the deck, that doesn't count as like leaving the field. But I'm gonna go with <laughs> the faker resolves. The haunted rock it does not require you to send a card. Well, you would be correct, Doug. So. Okay. As you know, continuous spells and trap cards do need to be face up in order to resolve their effects. And Haunted Rock sending an Altergeist monster from Hand to the Grave is not a cost. It's uh, something that happens when the effect itself resolves. So because the card isn't on the field anymore, you do not need to send the card from your hand to the graveyard. So you're currently four for six. And obviously, very simple, the multi-faker is allowed to activate. Same thing as flipping the personal spoof figure using the effect on activation to search. Uh, this is something that a lot of Altergeist players are very familiar with. So this is going to be one that you've probably encountered before and this is one of those that are asked i think every single time an altergeist player i see at a regional at a ycs something like that they always seem to ask these questions for some reason here we're just going to set up the board there's going to be an altergeist protocol and a marionette placed onto the field while player a controls altergeist protocol they normal summon altergeist marionette and activate its effect in response Player B activates their set infinite impermanence, which is in the same column as the Altergeist protocol, and targets the Marionetter. How does this chain resolve? No, okay, cool. this, this, I can see why this one comes up a lot. I, uh, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to get cocky this time. I'm going to make sure I read. Even though I'm like 99% <laughs> sure on this one, I just okay, don't want to get like, screwed over. What's your initial thought? Overhead. Before reading, what is your initial thought? Oh, the immediate thought is that the Marionetter does get negated and does the protocol because impermanence... Oh, let's see, I want to read Impermanence. But, because uh, Protocol only protects against the activated, the activation effects of activated effects. So the Impermanence, I believe... Reading cards! ...negate its effects <laughs> till the end of his turn. Then if his card is set before the activation and is, and is on the field of resolution for us to turn all his spell traps in the column are negated. I guess the question is... Oh, man. I know the Protocol is negated. Maybe, maybe the Marionetta resolves, though. That's... That's kind of a tricky one. Okay. Do you know how? Do, are you familiar with the then conjunction and its applications? Probably not as much as you. <laughs> then, could it be like on resolution? Oh, I'm gonna guess. This feels so wrong, but I'm gonna <laughs> guess that that just doesn't make any sense. My first. Run me through your thought process. I I feel like my knee jerk reaction is it's all negated. But okay. now I'm like second guessing myself with the then conjunction on if the Marionetta resolves with the protocols we had. But that doesn't really make any sense because shouldn't it all happen at once? T t talk to me about the then conjunction. What do you know about that? <laughs> okay, so the then conjunction um, <clears throat> requires A to successfully happen in order for you to successfully perform B of the effect. So you need to do A successfully to Oh, then well then none of it's negated. That is how the then conjunction works in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, then uh, none of it is negated, I don't think. So do we have a final answer? This card is set, target face negates effects. But wait, it's so confusing because like, technically it's negating some effects, just not the activated effect that I'm using right now. Oh. I don't fucking know, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not helping at all. No, your, I really your feel mind, like it's all Your mind is a merry-go-round. I literally see the wheels turning in your head right now. <laughs> this comes up every game. It really doesn't. Like, it absolutely doesn't. Um, this genuinely, this genuinely, I think I've... Every single YCS I've been to or regional I've been to where a player has played Altergeist, I think I've seen this happen every single one of those events. Genuinely. I'm really feeling like Impermanence... Because it doesn't care, when we were talking about like, the skill drain thing with Protocol earlier, mm -hmm. Impermanence, like, even though, like, the Impermanence doesn't know that Marionetter doesn't have any other non-activated effects. Like, it just negates the card's effects. So even if the, so it does get the negation on the Marionetter, even if it's not going to work against that particular effect, in which case it would also negate the Protocol because it did negate the Marionetter. I feel like it's all negated. I think I'm wrong, but I'll say it's all negated. Well, Doug... You would be correct. It is indeed all okay. negated. The reason why yeah, okay. is because... I just want to say that like the only reason I was even questioning <laughs> it, because like I said, that was like my knee-jerk reaction. But yeah. then chat was like, oh, he's throwing, he's throwing. And so, <laughs> I'm questioning my whole life after misreading the damage step thing on multi-fake. Or not reading that. I wouldn't say misreading. Well, <laughs> uh, read you need, you need, you need to understand that trusting Twitch chat is a misplay. Anyone that thinks, oh, chat is coaching the streamer, do not know how a Twitch chat works. <laughs> so Altergeist Protocol doesn't prevent the infinite impermanence from negating the effects of the altergeist monster targeted all protocol 
effectively achieves is that it allows Altergeist monsters that have their effects negated to resolve their activated uh, activated effects successfully despite having their effects negated. So that doesn't prevent the inf infinite impermanence from affecting the Marionette and negating its effects, which is all Imperm needs to do successfully in order to uh, negate the effect of the protocol. So once the impermanence resolves, and uh, once the Marionette resolves, I should say, it has its effects negated and the protocol doesn't allow it to resolve successfully because it's negated by the infinite impermanence. No, that was like a case where I was like, man, I feel like I've always just said that it's negated, but then what if I say that and then I'm wrong? And it's like, how many times <laughs> have I done this the wrong I way? I mean, hey, you took the time to think about it and you got the right answer in the end. And you, ha you are yeah. currently on five for seven. And now we go on to the final question. In this situation, the opponent controls a skill drain and the turn player controls a Altergeist Memory Gant, which is the OCG card. We'll read this in just a moment. And a Marionetter on the field. So the question here is, during the battle phase, while player A controls Altergeist Protocol and player B controls Skill Drain, player A uses the first effect of Altergeist Memory Gant, tributing their Altergeist Marionetter. After this chain has resolved, how much attack does the Altergeist Memory Gant have? So the effect of Altergeist Memory Gant is during the battle phase quick effect, you can tribute one other monster, this card gains attack equal to the attack of the tributed monster had on the field. So here, if you use Memory Gant while the opponent has Skill Drain, you control Protocol and you tribute away the Marionette, as we will see in this example here. How much attack does the Memory Gant have on resolution of this chain? Hmm. So <laughs> my knee-jerk reaction is to say it gains it like all of the Marionette attack, you know, just fine. There's a protocol on the board. But I'm wondering, you you like these like shitty attack modifying questions <laughs> and i almost wonder if there's like some weird ruling where the attack modification is a continuous effect that's like placed on the memory gant and then skill drain would negate it because it's a continuous effect even though the effect to gain the attack is an activated effect but see, I just don't know that. I mean, who who would know that besides Coder? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't really use a lot of attack modifying abilities. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, like, oh, does... Because the activated effect is to tribute the monster and give the attack. So that obviously goes through. But then Which is would there, make like... memory again how much? Uh, what? 30... I don't know. 44? 44. Okay. Mm. I don't know. Like, I don't really know enough about this, but I'm just going to guess that it's at 44. I'm probably wrong, though. Okay, so you are incorrect, and here's the reason why. So the Altergeist Memory Gant does resolve its effect in order to go up to 44. However, when a card uh, applies a stat modification only to itself, if it can only apply it to itself, something like Dante, for example, if its effects are negated after the effect has successfully resolved, that stat modification is forgotten. It is lost. So it'll go back yeah, to Yeah, I knew there was some was. bullshit about it being <laughs> continuous, whatever. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not a continuous. It'll apply a lingering effect only to itself where it boosts its own attack. So it does resolve successfully and goes up to 44. However, once that chain resolves, the effect of Skill Drain will negate that effect of Altergeist. Because mm. the effect of Altergeist Memory Gant is being negated by the Skill Drain here, uh, the protocol just lets the um, activated effect resolve successfully, but right. afterwards it goes right back down to 2800. That's fair. So you end with a fantastic score of five out of eight. You have beaten out Team Samurai X1 himself, yeah, and you have uh, you have proven that it you have a passing been grade. Six out of eight. I think that multi-figure <laughs> question was. <laughs> it's funny. That was me being too cocky. I, I deserve that one. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show that most uh, Yu-Gi-Oh players actually make mistakes on not reading the card as opposed yeah. to, you know, actually like making the mistake on not understanding how the card functions in and of itself. You know what I mean? Thank you so much for coming on to the show. I really, really appreciate it, my dude. <laughs> Thanks. No, thanks for having me. This was fun. Any other YouTubers, if you guys want to come onto the show, hit me up in the comments, hit me up on Discord, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll get you guys onto the show as well. So thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Peace. See you later.